Some people say a man is made out of mud. A poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood and skin and bone. A mind that's weak and a back that's strong. You load 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. Say, Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. sun didn't shine picked up my shovel and i walked to the mine i loaded 16 tons of number nine coal and the star bar said well bless my soul you load 16 tons why do you get another day older and deeper in debt speed and on to call me cause i can't go i owe my soul to the company store in trouble, my middle name, I was raised in a cane break by an old mama line, and a hot tone woman made me walk the line, you load 16 tons, why do you get another day older and deeper in debt, so Peter don't you call me cause I can't go, I owe my soul to the company store. A lot of men did, a lot of men died. One fist of iron, the other is steel. If the right one don't get you, then the left one will. You load 16 tons. Why do you get another day older and deeper in debt? So be the launch comic, cause I can't go. The company But can he do the job? I know he can get the job. But can he do the job? I'm not arguing that with you. Harry, I am not arguing that with you. Who said that? I didn't say that. If I said that, I would have been wrong. Maybe. 
maybe. I'm not arguing that with you. Yeah, Harry. I know he can get the job. But can he do the job? I'm not arguing that with you. I am not arguing that with you. I am not arguing that with you. Who told you that? No. I told you that. Me. What? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Good morning, Dee Dee. Hi, Joe. What's with the shoe? I'm losing my soul. Yeah. How you doing? Feel kind of tired. Yeah. Yeah, each one gets sent five catalogs. Oh, can't do it. Why not? I only got 12 catalogs left altogether. OK. I'll take care of this. Yes, please go watch over. How are you doing, Joe? <clears throat> well, uh, I'm not feeling very good, Mr. Waturi. Huh. So what else is new? You never feel good. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, that's the problem, yeah. Anyway, I, I have a doctor's appointment today. Another doctor's appointment? Yeah. Listen, Joe, what's this thing you tell me about the catalogs? I well, only got 12. Why did you let us get down to 12? I told you. When? Uh, three weeks ago and then two weeks ago. Did you tell me last week? No. Why not? Uh, I, I don't know. I thought you knew. It... Not good enough, Joe. Not nearly good enough. I put you in charge of the entire advertising library. Now you mean this room. I give you carte blanche how to deal with the materials in here? You put the orders into the printer, Mr. Waturi, not me. That's how you wanted it. You are not competent to put the orders into the printer. That's a very technical I job. I can explain it. I was going to do better than that, Joe. I was going to make you assistant manager. I want to make you assistant manager. But you, you're not flexible. You're inflexible. I don't feel inflexible. You're inflexible. Totally. And what's this about a doctor's appointment? You're always going to the doctor. I don't feel good. So what? You think I feel good? Nobody feels good. After childhood, it's a fact of life. I feel rotten. So what? I don't let it bother me. I don't let it interfere with my job. What do you want from me, Mr. Waturi? You're like a child. And what's this lamp for? Is there not enough light in here for you? The fluorescents uh, affect me. They make me feel blotchy, puffy. I thought this light would. Get rid of the light. This is not your bedroom, Joe. This is an office. Maybe if you start treating this like a job instead of some kind of a welfare hospital, you'll shape up. And Joe, I want those catalogs. Then please order them. Watch yourself, Joe. Think about what I just said. You've got to get yourself into a flexible frame, or else you are no place. And take that light off the desk. I will. Do it now. Good. Why you let Watori talk to you like that? 
like what? What's wrong with you? I don't feel good. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I don't know. Mr. Banks? Mr. Banks? Mr. Banks? Yeah. Dr. Ellison will see you now. How are you feeling, Mr. Banks? <clears throat> Pretty much the same. I feel puffy, blotchy. I never seem to have very much energy. I keep getting these little sore throats. I, I really just don't feel very good. And how long have you felt this way? Well, pretty much since I left the fire department. On and off, but, but since then, about eight years. What did you do in the fire department? Well, uh, you know, I put out fires. Was it dangerous? Yeah, there was some pretty rough stuff, but <clears throat> I came out of it uh, okay. The, the hard part was not feeling good all the time. I started not feeling good all the time, so I had to quit. Yes. I've gotten the results of your tests. I've got cancer. No. Something wrong with my blood or my urine? No, they're fine. But there is something. Tell me. You have a brain cloud. Brain cloud? There's a black fog of tissue running right down the center of your brain. It's very rare. It'll spread at a regular rate. It's very destructive. And it's incurable. Yes. How long? Six months. You can pretty much count on it being about that. It's not painful. Your brain will simply fail, followed abruptly by your body. You can depend on at least four and a half or five months of perfect health. Wait, what are you talking about, Doctor? I don't feel good right now. Well, that's the ironic part, really. Mr. Banks, you're a hypochondriac. There's nothing wrong with you that has anything to do with your symptoms. Now, my guess is that your experiences in the fire department were extremely traumatic. You experienced the imminent possibility of death several times. Yeah. You survived. But the cumulative anxiety of those brushes with death left you habitually fearful about your physical person. I'm not sick except for this terminal disease. Which has no symptoms. That's right. It was only because of your insistence on having so many tests that we happened to discover the problem. What am I going to do? Well, if you have any savings, you might think about taking a trip. A vacation. I don't have any savings. A few hundred bucks. I spent everything I had on doctors. Yes. But perhaps you'll want a second opinion. <sighs> Brain cloud. I knew it. Well, I, I didn't know it, but I knew it. Yes. What am I going to do? You have some time left, Mr. Banks. You have some life left. My advice to you is live it well. Something. But the man don't say nothing. I'm 
I didn't say that. If I said that, I would have been wrong. I, I would have been wrong, isn't that right, Harry? I'm not arguing that with you. I'm not arguing that with you. I am not arguing that with you. L listen, let me call you back. I got something here, okay? Hey, don't say anything until we finish our conversation, all right? <clears throat> Joe. Yeah! You are at lunch three hours. Yeah, Bob. Property, mister. Joe, don't touch that! Ah, what are you doing? I'm opening or, or closing the main drain. You shouldn't be touching that, Joe. Nothing happened. You know how long I've been wondering what would happen if I did that? What's the matter with you? Brain cloud. What? Oh, never mind. Listen, Mr. Watori. Frank. I quit. You mean today? That's right. That's great. Don't come looking for a reference for me. Okay, I won't. Robinson Crusoe. Now you blew this job. Romeo and Juliet. The Odyssey. You blew this job. Ukulele. You've been working here four and a half years. The work I did, I probably could have done in five or six months. 
at least four years left over. Four years. If I had them now, like gold in my hand. Here. This is for you. Goodbye, Dee. You're going? If you're leaving, leave. You'll get your check. And I promise you, you'll be easy to replace. I should say something. What are you muttering? This life. Life, what a joke. This situation, this room. Uh, Joe, maybe you should just go. You look terrible, Mr. Waturi. You look like a bag of shit stuffed in a cheap suit. Not that anybody could look good under these zombie lights. I, I, I can feel them sucking the juice out of my eyeball. Suck, 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 suck. <laughs> 300 bucks a week. That's the news. For 300 bucks a week, I've lived in this sink, this used rubber. You watch it, mister. There's a woman here. Don't you think I know that, Frank? Don't you think that I am aware that there is a woman here? I can smell her like, like a flower. I can taste her like sugar on my tongue. When I'm 20 feet away, I can hear the fabric of her dress when she moves in her chair. Not that I've done anything about it. I've gone all day, every day, not doing, not saying, not taking the chance for $300 a week. And Frank, the coffee, it stinks. It tastes like arsenic. These lights give me a headache. If they don't give you a headache, you must be dead. So let's arrange a funeral. You better get out of here. I'm telling you. You're not telling me nothing. I'm telling you! Why? I ask myself, why have I put up with you? I can't imagine. But I know. It's fear, yellow freaking fear. I've been too chicken shit afraid to live my life, so I sold it to you for 300 freaking dollars. Oh, wait! You are lucky I don't kill you! You're lucky I don't rip your freaking throat out! But I'm not going to! Maybe you're not so lucky at that. I'm gonna leave you here, Mr. Wahawaturi. What could be worse than that? Dee Dee. Yeah. How about dinner tonight? Yeah, okay. Wow. What a change. Who am I? That's the real question, isn't it? Who, who am I? Who are you? What other questions are there? What other questions are there, really? If you, you want to understand the universe, embrace the universe. The, the door to the universe is you. Me? You? Me? You are really intense. Am I? Oh, I, I guess I am. Uh, I was. What do you mean? I mean, uh, a long time ago. In the beginning, I was full of, you know, Piss and vinegar, nothing got me down. I, I wanted to know. You wanted to know what? Everything. But then I had some experiences. I was talking to this guy today, and he says that I got scared. Scared of what? Have you ever been scared? I guess so, sure. What scared you? A lot of things. At the moment, you scared me a little bit. Me? <laughs> yeah. Why should I scare you? Who? I don't know. There's something going on with you. This morning, you were like a lump. And now you're, uh... How do you feel? I feel great. See? You never feel great. No, I never do. <gasps> What's funny? I feel great. That is very funny. <laughs> Where are you? I'm right here. I wish I was where you are, Joe. No, you don't. Did I ever tell you that the first time that I saw you, I felt like I had seen you before? Wait a minute. What'd you do? I bribed them to sing us a song that would drive us insane and make our hearts swell and burst.
en tu calle estoy sin saber por qué sin pensar y llego junto a tu balcón es el corazón quien me trae aquí es aquí donde vive mi amor The doctor told me there's something wrong with my brain. Now, it's not catching, but I've got just five or six months to live. What? I'm gonna die. Uh, I feel so uh, appreciative uh, of my life. What? You're gonna die? Yeah, but so what? Just stay, just tonight. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Uh... I can't handle it, Joe. Got my bag. Joe Banks? Mr. Joe Banks? Yeah? Have I come at a bad time? Yes. Uh, no. I don't know how to answer that question. Well, can I come in? Can we talk? You're not dressed. No. Doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother you. Uh, not a nice place you have here, Joe. Oh, mind if I call you Joe? No. Dingy. Dismal. Shabby. Dinky. Ah, not much. I see it as a sign of tremendous sophistication that you haven't demanded my name. Or ask me what I'm doing here. My name is Samuel Harvey Grainamore. Joe Banks. Oh, I know. Trying to see the hero in there. What do you mean? Uh, 
You dragged two kids down a six-story burning staircase. Now, that was brave. But then you went back up for the third kid. That was heroic. Come on, now, you're a hero! <laughs> well, that was a long time ago. Yes, it was. How do you know my name? Oh, and all about it. Much as I can learn 24 hours, anyway. Peanuts? You know. Quit your job, huh? Yeah. Well, that's not like a dumb job. No family? Hmm. Good for you. Families are a pain in the neck. What do you know about superconductors? Nothing. Me neither. But I own a huge company that dominates the world market for superconductors. Really? Ah. Sit down. Dr. Ellison, you were in his office yesterday? Yes. Uh, he told me your news. He thought that uh, you and I might be able to help each other. You got any whiskey? Nope. I want to hire you, Joe Banks. I want to hire you to jump into a volcano. You know, I do have some whiskey. There's an island in the South Pacific called Waponi Wu. The name means a little island with a big volcano. Now, the Waponis are a cheerful people who live a simple existence, fishing in the lagoon, picking fruit. Their one fear is that big volcano. They call it the Big Wu. They believe that an angry fire god in the volcano will sink the island, unless once every hundred years he is appeased. It's been 99 years, 11 months, and 11 days since the fire god got his propers, and the Waponis are scared. How is the god appeased? Of his own free will, a man's got to jump into the volcano. Now, as you might imagine, none of the Waponis are anxious to volunteer for the honor of jumping into the big womb. So what do you do? What do you do? You do some trading. <laughs> There's a mineral on that island, Mr. Banks. It's called Boobaro. I don't know anywhere else on the planet where you can find more than a gram of this stuff. And believe me, I've looked. Because without Boobaro, I can't make my superconductors. I tried to get the mineral rights from the Waponis, but I don't seem to have anything they want. But they do want a hero, Mr. Banks. And they'll give me the mineral rights if I find them one. Why would I jump into a volcano? From your exploits in the fire department, I think you've got the courage. <laughs> you do? Well, does it take more guts to twice traverse a staircase in flames or to make a one-time leap into the mouth of a smoking volcano? Damn if I know, Kimasabi. All I know is that when you're making those kind of calls, you're up in the high country. From your doctor. You know you're on your way out anyway. You haven't got any money. I checked. You, you want to wait it out here in this in this apartment? Oh, that sounds kind of grim to me. Not the way I'd want to go, I tell you that. Uh, these are yours, if you take the job. It'll be uh, 20 days from today before you'd have to actually jump into the volcano. You could shop today. Yeah, get yourself some clothes, you know, for an adventure. And tomorrow, a plane to L.A. First class, naturally, and you'll be met. Stay at the best hotel. And the next day, you board a yacht. My uh, competitors sometimes watch the airports of all. Yachts are real beauty. Belongs to me, gourmet chef. Sail to the South Pacific 10, 15 days. While ponies come out to meet you. Oh, a total red carpet situation. You're a national hero. You're, you're Charles Lindbergh. It's wine, women, and song in the sweetest little paradise you ever saw. And then, you jump into the volcano. Live like a king, die like a man. That's what I say. What do you say? All right, I'll do it. <laughs> Here's my card. And your plane ticket, American. Noon, out of Kennedy tomorrow. Hello, I have an American Express gold card. Can I rent a limousine for the day? Great. Does a driver come with that? Great. Do you rent anything else? No? Okay, and that's it.
So where would you like to go? Excuse me? Where would you like to go, sir? Uh, I thought I might do some shopping today. All right. Where would you like to go shopping? I don't know. All right. Well, where would you go shopping? What for? What do you need? Clothes. What kind of clothes? What's your taste? Well, I, I don't exactly know. Why are you stopping the car? They just hired me to drive the car, sir. I'm not here to tell you who you are. I didn't ask you to tell me who I am. You're hinting around about clothes. That happens to be a very important topic to me, sir. Clothes, Mr. Banks. Banks. Clothes makes the man. I believe that. You say to me you want to go shopping, want to buy clothes, but you don't know what kind. You leave that hanging in the air like I'm going to fill in the blanks. Now, that to me is like asking me who you are, and I don't know who you are. I don't want to know. It's taken me all my life to find out who I am, and I am tired now. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> What's your name? Joe. My name's Marshall. How you do? Wait a minute. I'm coming back. Okay. Now, what's your situation? Explain your situation to me. I'm going away on a long trip. All right. And I, I have the opportunity to buy some clothes today. Yeah. Money's no object. Good. Where are you going? Well, tonight, I'm going out in the city. Nice places? I hope so. And then tomorrow, I'm flying to L.A. First class? Yeah. Good. Then I'm getting on a yacht and sailing to the South Pacific. How are you? No, this really unknown little island. No tourists? I don't think so. Good. Then I'm staying on the island for a couple of weeks, and then that's it. And what kind of clothes do you got now? Well, I got the kind of clothes I'm wearing. So you got no clothes? <laughs> Hey, Joe, how about a tux? I'll get one if you get one. I can't be buying no Armani tux. I'm a working man. You're getting paid to drive the car. No one's paying you to give me all this advice. Let me buy you the tux, and we'll call it even. I feel like I'm getting married. I feel like I'm giving you away. <laughs> Take nine pairs. Hi. Give me Cassie Cimarelli, please. Yeah. yeah. Hello, okay. Cassie. It's Marshall. How do? Good. Listen. I got somebody that needs you today. Look like a prince in a fairy tale. You're coming into focus, kid. She's there. I'll take it. Yes, sir. Swiss Army Knife, World Band Travel Radio, Shaving Kit, Two Brass Coleman Lanterns, and the Violin Case Bar. Will there be anything else, sir? I'll take this, too. Have you thought much about luggage, Mr. Banks? No, I never really have. It's the central preoccupation of my life. You travel the world, you're away from home, Perhaps away from your family. All you have to depend on is yourself and your luggage. Yeah, I guess that's true. Are you traveling light or heavy? Heavy. Flying? Flying and by ship. An ocean voyage? Yes. Ah, yes. So, a real journey. And then I'll be staying on this island? And I don't 
even really know if I'll be living in a hut or what. Very exciting. As a luggage problem, I believe I have just the thing. Premier steamer trunk, all handmade, only the finest materials. It's even watertight, tight as a drum. If I had the need and the wherewithal, Mr. Banks, this would be my trunk of choice. I'll take four of them. May you live to be a thousand years old, sir. Thanks, same to you. Where to, back to Staten Island? No, no. Uh... A really nice hotel. The, the plaza. The plaza's nice. Well, where will you go? I'd go to the Pierre. Then we are off to the Pierre. Come on, fellas. Move Marshal? Along. Yeah. Go. I wonder if you'd want to have dinner with me tonight. I can't do that. I go. got the wife and kids at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. Everything's at check in when you're ready, sir. Listen. Haven't you got anybody? No. But there are certain times in your life when I guess you're not supposed to have anyone, you know? Certain doors you're going to go through alone. You're going to be all right. Joe Banks. Yeah. Who are you? I'm the daughter of the guy who hired you, Angelica Granamore. Oh, uh, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Daddy told me to tell you that I don't know what he hired you for and not to tell me, that I'm totally untrustworthy. I'm a flibber to gibbet. Come on. Let's get out of here. I have some luggage. Oh, then follow me. I've never been to L.A. before. You're kidding me. What do you think? It looks fake. I like it. This is a great town. It stinks, but it's a great town. Sea scallops with three caviars? Thank you. The Dungeness Crabs? Yes. 
pepper, sir? No. What's the matter? Nothing. They do look like little monsters or something. But they're good little monsters. So what did you do before you signed on with Daddy? I was an advertising librarian for a medical supply company. Oh. I have no response to that. What do you do? What do I do? Yeah. Why do you ask? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm a painter and a poet. Really? Yes. There's a painting of mine right there. Well, that's terrific. Where do you get your ideas? You have to understand something about art. It comes from someplace. Well, nice view. It, it's like, it's like looking down on the stars. Would you like to hear one of my poems? Sure. Long ago, the delicate tangles of his hair covered the emptiness of my hands. Would you like to hear it again? OK. Long ago, the delicate tangles of his hair covered the emptiness of my hand. What's the matter? Did you ever think about killing yourself? What? Why would you do that? Why shouldn't I? Because some things take care of themselves. They're not your job. Maybe they're not even your business. I, I, I like your poem. I'm a grown woman, and I live on my father's money. That restaurant that had my painting up, that's my father's restaurant. Listen, listen to me. If, if you have a choice between killing yourself and and doing something you're scared of doing, why not take the leap and do the thing you're scared of doing? You mean stop taking money and leave L.A.? You see, you know what you're scared of doing. Why don't you do it? See what happens. Uh, you must be tired. I don't mind talking. Well, I do. This is one of those typical conversations where we're all open and sharing our innermost thoughts, and it's all bullshit and a lie, and it doesn't cost you anything. Look, I don't know you. I don't think I know anybody. You're angry? I can, I can see that. I'm very troubled. I'm not ready to... There's only so much time. You want to use it well. So I'm here, talking to you. I don't want to throw that away. I have no response to that. Maybe you should take me back to the hotel. Do you want me to come in? I could come up with you. No. All right. Will you meet me for breakfast? I'm supposed to get you to the boat by 10, but I could meet you for breakfast. OK. I told you I was a flibber to gibbet.
What do you think? Mr. River. I'm sorry I was so grotesque last night. You were fine. I disappointed you. So what did Daddy hire you to do? It's kind of complicated. Okay, don't tell me. Thank you. I bet Patricia knows. Who's Patricia? She's my half-sister. She's the one who's sailing you wherever you're going. She is? You didn't know? No. Daddy loves a secret almost as much as he loves money. Can I ask you something? What? Why are you dressed like Jungle Jim? I could change. You think this is inappropriate for the boat? No, it's fine. <gasps> we better get going. I've got a guy dropping your trunks off at the marina who may or may not have understood my travel directions. Come on. Andale, Andale. Is that it? Yeah. What's the trunks, Felix? Oh, those, those are... Well, my, my name's not Felix, it's Joe. I know. That's your half-sister? Yeah. That outfit's wearing you, Felix. Why are you calling me Felix? My name is Joe. I'm calling you Felix because I do what I want. Hello, Angelica. Hello, Patricia. Do you know do where you know Daddy where is? See, we never know where our father is, and we always suspect that the other one knows, but it's all phone calls and telegrams, eh, Angelica? Well, you're in a rotten mood. It's the sunshine. It gets me down. Where are you going? Can you believe it? Dad said not to tell you. Goes with my theory. Power makes you paranoid. Well, get ready to heave, Felix. My name is Joseph or Joe. All right. Joe, get ready. We're leaving. Wish me luck. Good luck. You're shaking. Go. Well, it looks delicious. We eat well aboard the Tweedledee. The Tweedledee? Yeah, it's the name of the boat. Oh. So, we're going to the island of Waponi Wu. I guess so. Why? You don't know? No. You ever been there before? No. All I know about Waponi Wu is that the name means a little island with a big volcano and that the people. The Waponi like orange soda. They like orange soda? Yeah. 1,800 years ago, a Roman galley with a crew of Jews and Druids got caught in a huge storm off Carthage. They were swept a thousand miles off course and ended up on the wrong side of the Horn of Africa. Thinking they were returning to Rome, they sailed deep into the South Pacific and finally ended up colonizing a lightly populated Polynesian island, which they named Waponi Wu. Thus was born the Waponi culture, a mixture of Polynesian, Celtic, Hebrew, and Latin influences. The Waponis are known throughout Polynesia as having a peculiar love of orange soda and no sense of direction. Why did you talk to me so snotty back on the dock? 
Because you work for my father, and I'm angry with my father. Why are you angry with him? Because he's never around. Well, if you're angry with him and he's never around, why are you working for him? I don't work for him. My transport of you is strictly a favor. You do favors for people you're mad at? I don't work for him. All right. He said he'd give me this vote if I took you. Wow. Well, he's got two of them. This is the Tweedledee. There's a Tweedledum, too. Well, I guess that makes everything okay, then. Yes, it does. Is this okay for you? Oh, sure. The boys like to sleep in the hall. Dagmar sleeps on deck when the weather's good, so you pretty much have things to yourself. I'm in the little stateroom. Great. I'm sorry I was so rude on the dock. It's okay. Did you sleep with my, with my sister? Actually, she's my half-sister. No, I didn't. Okay. Do you like to fish? Sure. Maybe tomorrow we can do some fishing. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the light switch. Did Mike show you how to work the bathroom? Yeah. Good. Do you want me to turn it off while I go? Okay. I love my sister. I, I know she screwed up. I love my father, even though I never see him, and he's not so great when I do see him. I'm just very nervous about this trip. He didn't tell me anything, and you don't seem to be telling me anything. But it's more than that. Um, I've always kept clear of my father's stuff ever since I got out on my own, and now he's pulled me back in. He knew I wanted this boat, and he used it, and he got me working for him, which I swore I would never do. I feel ashamed because I had a price. He named it, and now I know that about myself. And I could treat you like I did back out on the dock, but that would be... Me kicking myself for selling out, which isn't fair to you. It doesn't make me feel any better. I don't know what your situation is, but I wanted you to know what mine is. Not just to explain some rude behavior, but because we're on a little boat for a while and I'm soul sick. And you're going to see that. Like my sister, she's so sick, too. And if you slept with her, then I would have known something about you. But you didn't. And you didn't. And I believe you. I'm glad you believe me. Have you ever slept on a boat before? No. It really affects your dreams. Yeah. I look forward to it, even though sometimes the dreams really shake me up. Okay. Good night.
right. How long? For the rest of my life. I can't imagine that. Are you used to this? What? The ocean. The stars. Oh. <laughs> you never get used to it. Why do you think I want this boat? All I want to do is sail away. Huh. Where would you go? Away from the things of man. Do you believe in God? I believe in myself. What does that mean? I have confidence in myself. And I've been doing some soul searching lately, been asking myself some pretty tough questions. You know what I found out? I have no interest in myself. I start thinking about myself, I get bored out of my mind. <laughs> well, what does interest you? I don't know. Courage. Courage interests me. So you're going to spend the rest of your life on a tiny island in the South Pacific? Well, up till now, I've lived on a tiny island called Staten Island. Commuted to this job, a shut up room, pumped in air, no sunshine, despicable people. And now that I have some distance from that situation, I find that unbelievable. Your life seems unbelievable. To me, all of this, like, life seems unbelievable to me. My father says that almost the whole world is asleep. Everybody you know, everybody you see, everybody you talk to. He says that only a few people are awake, and they live in a state of constant, total amazement. I have less than six months to live before ponies believe they need a human sacrifice or their island is going to sink into the ocean. They have this mineral your father wants, so he hired me to leap into their volcano. What? You're not going to make me say that again, are you? No. Well, aren't you going to say anything? I don't know what to say. You tell me you're dying, you tell me you're jumping into a volcano. My mind is a blank. Oh, I can understand that. Is this disease catching? No, no, no. Good night, then. I'll see you in the morning. It's a little weird today, huh? There's a typhoon warning. Good morning, Mr. Banks. Good morning, Dagmar. Looks like we're in for a blow. Can I help? Yeah, you could tie that up. Feels dead, doesn't it? Mike? Yes? Get below, start the engine. Tell Tony to head us into the wind and keep us into the wind. There isn't any wind. There will be. Are you worried? I think we'll be all right. The hatches are down, the sails are down. We're ahead of the game. What exactly is a typhoon? You know, Joe? I think you're going to find out. Two to 
approximately 150 degrees, 18 minutes west. We are in severe distress. What else should I do? Uh, don't go on deck. The, the engine just check on deck. Mayday. Mayday. Dagmar! Is everything okay? He looks good. But I'm going to stay with you. Take care of Patricia. She's okay. The main boom doesn't look secure. What? Looks like it's gonna bust loose. What are you doing? It's my boat. Thank you. 
Whose name I do not know. Thank you for my life. I forgot how big Thank you. Thank you for my life.
hijau Didn't you drink any water for yourself, Joe? <laughs> That's for you. What happened to the yacht? Lightning. No sign of Dagmar or the boys? Everything went down. God. I still have my trunks. <laughs> Toby, Chief. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm Joe Banks. Is this is Patricia Granamore. You speak English. I have learned. You came to stop the anger of the woo? Yeah. Tonight we will have a big feast. And then at the end of the feast, you will climb to the top of the big woo and you will jump in, okay? Okay. Pelica, Pelica! I host 
the children of children and we live as we are shown. Now a change has come. There were ponies like this soda and no one among my people would jump into the big woo. They've traded with this man, your father, for a hero. We have no hero of our own. I am the Toby. I cannot be the hero. It is my place to hope for my people. But the woo calls and no one from my people says I'll go to my end for the rest of you. I, I don't have any people of my own, Chief. I'm my only hope for a hero. Once more, I'll call upon the Waponies for a hero. Who knew Woe's away? <laughs> Who knew Woe? <laughs> Drama said sets away. Come along. Now. <laughs> Who come along? The Woe wants his flesh. Take me to the volcano! Ceremony or anything? No, you just jump in. Come on out. Wait, what? Wait, wait. Stop right there. I love you. I've fallen in love with you. I've never loved anybody. I don't know how it happened. I never even slept with him or anything. And now you're gonna kill yourself. Can you give us a minute? You love me? Yes, I love you. I can feel my heart. I feel like I'm going crazy. You just can't die and leave me here on the stinking earth without you. I've got to do it. Why? Why? The chief doesn't even want you to do it. Do you, chief? Because I have wasted my entire life, and I'm going to die. Now I have a chance to die like a man, and I'm going to take it. I've got to take it. I love you. I love you, too. I've never been in love with anybody before, either. It's great. I am glad. <laughs> but the timing stinks. I gotta go. Joe! Go back now! Get out of here! No! 
Please let me do what I gotta do! Marry me! What? Chief! Chief, could you come up here, please? What the hell are you doing? I, I want him to marry us. I'm gonna jump in the volcano. Oh, so marry me and then jump in the volcano. What? Could you marry us, please? Okay. I don't want to get married. What is the problem? You're afraid of the commitment? You're gonna have to love and honor me for about 30 seconds. You can't handle that? All right. Marius. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you want to marry her? Yes. You want to marry him? <laughs> yes. You're married. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> I'm going now. Don't jump. Patricia, I want you to listen to me. These are my last words. I gotta be brave. I gotta jump in. Goodbye. <gasps> Please don't come out here. You are not the only one with last words, you know. What? I can't think of anything to say. I'm jumping in with you. Oh, no, you're not. Whether thou goest, I go. You didn't sign up for this. I do what I want. Don't do it for me. I'm not doing it for you. <gasps> Joe, nobody knows anything. We'll take this leap and we'll see. We'll jump and we'll see. That's life. I saw the moon when we were out there on the ocean, shining down on everything. Been miserable so long, years of my life wasted, free. Been a long time coming here to meet you. A long time on a crooked road. Did I ever tell you? The first time I saw you, I felt like I'd seen you before. You're not going anywhere without me. What are we hoping for here? A miracle? A miracle. Okay. I love you. You do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is it. Okay. Oh, this is it. Okay. Give me your hand. Are you dead? Why aren't you dead? I don't know. The, the volcano. It blew us out. We jumped in and it blew us out. That's impossible. Well, I say, at least it's a miracle. There goes my pony woo. God, we really lucked out. Yeah. Well, yeah, but. But what? Well, I hate to bring it up, but we're a million miles from no place. <laughs> we're gonna drown. No, we're not. We're gonna be all right. I don't know how, but we're gonna be all right.
Isn't this romantic? Uh, who gets a honeymoon like this? Hey, yeah. Yeah. But... What's the matter? I still have a problem. What? I have a brain cloud. A brain cloud? What is a brain cloud? Well, it's... Well, maybe I should get a second opinion. You didn't get a second opinion about something called a brain cloud? All right, all right. I just felt... I mean, what are you, a hypochondriac? I was. Oh, not now. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with you. Dr. Ellison said I was only going to win So some quack told you what you... Dr. Ellison? Yeah. That's my father's doctor. He is? Dr. Ellison doesn't have any other patients. My father owns Dr. Ellison. But why would he... He set you up. Who? My father. You mean he... Yeah. Set me up? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't have a brain cloud. Brain cloud, a brain cloud. You think they could think of something better than a brain cloud? <laughs> My whole life, I've been a victim. I've been a... <coughs> a dupe, a pawn. <clears throat> My throat is closing up. Oh, no, what? no, see, Joe, your whole life is ahead of you. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. I, I mean, that's good news. Well, yeah, I suppose it is. I mean, it's great! Yeah, that's, that's good. I'm relieved. That's great. I'm saved! <laughs> but still... No, well, what, what, what is it now? We're on a raft. There's no land in sight. I don't know. It's always gonna be something with you, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, though. What? Wherever we go, whatever we do... Yeah. We're gonna take this luggage with us. Deal. from the things of man, my love. Away from the things of man. <laughs>